So welcome, we will continue with the database transactions. Last time we saw an introduction to what the database transactions are, what are their properties and what they are used for. Uh, today we will uh, go over one area of the database transactions in much more detail which is the recovery systems. So today's topic is on recovery systems. So essentially if a transaction fails or something amiss happens, how does the database recover? So the recovery management system essentially the two properties that it tries to maintain is the atomicity and the durability. So these are the two important things that the recovery management system targets. And there is, so atomicity and durability are, will be covered, but there is an assumption, there is an important assumption which is called a fail stop assumption. So this is the recovery management systems make this thing, this is called a fail stop assumption because what it is being assumed in this fail stop assumption is the data that is on a non-volatile storage is never lost. So what is a non-volatile storage? The magnetic disks, etc. It is never lost. Now one may argue that how can it be that it is never lost because the magnetic disk may be corrupted, may be broken, may be harmed, lost, etc. What happens? The assumption for recovery management systems is that there will be adequate number of backups of the non-volatile storage, data in the non-volatile storage. So that can be always retrieved when necessary. So and that is a fail stop assumption is that the data on the non-volatile storage is not lost due to any problem, system crash, power failure, etc. Nothing can be lost there. So that is the thing and the recovery management systems have two main parts. The first one is action taken during the normal execution when a transaction is running normally. That is during that thing and then action taken after a failure. Now note that why is the second part important is that recovery system. So the word recovery means that something has gone wrong. So that is why you need to recover from that fault. So that is why there is an, a failure and uh, failure is assumed and then that needs to be recovered from that. If there is no failure then nothing needs to be done. Every transaction runs successfully and then the recovery management system is not invoked at all. But the point to study is that when there are failure, when there is a failure that happens. Fine. So these are the two important phases of the recovery management system. So these can consider the two phases of a recovery management system. And one other assumption that we do when we study these recovery management systems is that the transactions run serially. That is, there are no concurrent transactions. Again, this may sound uh, a little non-ideal that how can this happen, but as we will see that the uh, the argument about the correctness or the algorithmic views of the recovery systems do not depend on how the transactions are concurrent, etc. So for simplicity we just assume that the transactions run serially. So these two are the assumptions of a recovery management system. And this is essentially the recovery management system will try to argue about a single transaction and what happens when it fails. So we do this log based recovery first. The logs are the records that are written and uh, as we saw last time there are five types of entries that are made for a log for a transaction and so the log is maintained on a stable storage. So log is maintained on a stable storage. This is what is a stable storage is essentially the secondary storage or the hard drive etc. And again the stable storage the idea is that the log is never lost. So the stable storage meaning once something is stored into that stable storage because of this word stable that means it is never lost. So logs can be always retrieved that is the idea. So that is the fail stop assumption idea. Okay, And then there are log records as we showed last time. So whenever just to recap whenever a transaction starts there is a start t that log record entry is made. Before a read or write is done the corresponding uh, entry is made in the log. So this is very importantly before the actual read or write. Before the read or write is done, log is updated. So log is written before an actual read or write on the data item is done. So this is before, that is very important. And then if the transaction commits then successfully, then there is a commit t, otherwise there is an abort t. So these are the five operations that is done. 
right. So, now there are two types of approaches based on this log base. So, there are two ways of uh, recovering. The first one is called uh, deferred database modification. So, this is called a deferred database modification. This is a recovery management system based on logs. So, what is a deferred database uh, modification is that important point here is that all rights are deferred to after the partial commit. So, rights all rights I should say all rights are deferred till the point of partial commit. So, no right is actually made to the database. So, the transaction just notes what the rights are needed to be done, but these are not actually written to the database and only when a transaction partially commits, then these writes happen. Now, you may uh, remember what a partial commit is. A partial commit for a transaction happens when the transaction has finished all the operations in it successfully, fine. So, now suppose what may happen is that two cases may happen is that all the things are successful, everything is being successful in the transaction. Then these writes may then go through one after another, first write, second write, all those things may go through or there is some problem, there is a failure. Now, if there is a failure, then this partial commit stage is not reached at all. But now, you see the state of the database, if there is a failure because uh, it, it has not reached the partial commit, none of the writes have actually gone to the database. So, the database is in the state that uh, before the transaction was started. So, nothing has been changed into the database. So, nothing needs to be done actually because the transaction just aborts none of the data. So, all the writes are onto some temporary storage maybe in the main memory or somewhere else. Nothing in the database is actually being updated because the transaction has not reached the partial commit because there have been some failures. So, nothing needs to be done. So, essentially what all this means is something very interesting is that the write record does not need the old value. Write does not need old value. Why is it? Because it will never need to undo because only the new values need to be recorded because when uh, when is a transaction, when there is a transaction right, when it has committed partially that means all the transactions in all the operations in it are successful. Otherwise, there is no need to go back to the old value because the database already contains the old value. So, it is not needed. So, the entries for this deferred database modification, the write entries are of this form. It is simply write the transaction which says what is the data item and the new value that is it. So, the old value is not needed. Okay. Now, what happens is that after the transaction partially commits, now again there are two cases. So success, okay. After the tra transaction partially commits, the commit t entry is written to the log. So, commit t is written to the log and this log is then stored to stable storage. This log is then flushed to stable storage. So, every record in the log is then stored to the stable storage and then there are two things. So, now what may happen is again there are two cases. So, what will uh, thing is that? So, once the commit t has been written that means that the transaction is supposed to finish correctly. So, that means now what is happening now if the transaction actually finishes correctly, the database should have the effect of all the writes that the transaction did. And now, how does one get all the effects from the log? So, the database actually collects all those new write values from the log and just keeps on doing the write. So, this is the write, the first write operation there, then the second write operation there and so on and so forth. It just keeps doing it and again so, if all these writes are successful, then that is it, nothing uh, needs to be done. The database has made sure that every write has gone through. Otherwise, what may happen is that at the during this write, maybe there is a problem. There is a problem because there is a system crash, there is a failure, etcetera, etcetera. Now, what needs to be done then? Nothing really because the next time the system comes up, the system will check this log and will attempt these writes again. So, it will keep attempting this log and till it is essentially successful. Now, one important thing here is that the couple of things. First of all, this commit t is written to the uh, log after the partial commit is being done successfully. Okay. Now, the abort t entry is again not needed just like the old value is not needed in a deferred database modification. The abort t 
uh, the abort entry for the transaction t is also not needed. Why is that? The abort is not needed because when does an abort happen? When the transaction fails, there is some failure. Now, when the transaction fails, it simply stops doing anything else, it simply restarts, that is it. Why is that correct? Because the transaction has not yet changed anything into the database. And when does the transaction actually starts changing anything to the database? Only after the commit tree entry has been made. Now, this means that the everything in the transaction has gone through successfully. So, the transaction does not need to abort and therefore, the abort t entry, so this is the point, the abort tree entry is never used, it is because it is never written. Now, whenever suppose there is a system crash that has happened, okay. So, if everything goes on successfully then that is fine, but suppose there is a system crash happens. What does the database do? Then the database or the recovery management system, it reads through the log and finds out all the log records and finds out all the transactions for which there is a commit entry, commit t entry, correct. Now, so this commit t entry, if this is not found, so there are two cases, if this is not found, that means none of the writes into this transaction have started, so nothing needs to be done essentially. So, th there is nothing to be done, okay. On the other hand, if it is found, that means, if the transaction has said that it has committed, that means everything has to be successful, then all the writes pertaining to the transaction needs to be done. This needs to be applied. Now, this needs to be applied again and again. So, this is called a redo operation. So, those writes are needed to be done on the database. Now, the question is the following is that suppose as part of this transaction, there are two write entries, write t x to some value say 14 and then there is a write t y some other value say 12. Okay. The issue is the transaction has written commit t and there is a system crash. Now, the system crash may happen at this stage or this stage or this stage. Again, we are assuming that these write entries are atomic. So, either this complete write has happened or this. Now, let us take all of these cases one by one. Suppose the system crash happened at this stage. Okay. Now, we are doing this redo operation or whatever we are doing. So, we are now writing all these two things together. So, then that is correct, fine. Now, the second case is this has happened at this stage. So, that means the first write has gone through and the second write has not gone through. Now, the transaction or the log or the database or any system has no way of knowing whether it has gone through the x has been written successfully or not. So, it does not care whether it is written successfully or not, it still goes ahead and writes a new value of x to it. Now, what may happen is that x may have been the old value or it may have the new value 14. Now, it does not matter because the new value 14 will be again written to x, which is doing it once more, which is not probably efficient in the sense of doing that operation again and again, but it is correct. So, that is more important. So, this is correct and then of course, t is written. And finally, the third case is both have been written but the database did not know this, again it does not matter, it is just written again and again. The important point here is the following, is that for all of these, these redo operations may be done multiple times. So, even if x has been written, it may be written again and again and again. So, this redo must follow what is called the, the redo must be what is called an idempotent. This is an important term. The idempotent means the following, is that the multiple operations has the same effect as a single operation. So, redoing an operation, redoing a write operation multiple times has the same effect as doing it once. So, in other words, if the value of 14 is written to x uh, in the example, multiple times it has the same effect of writing 14 to x once and it does not uh, matter. So, redo must be idempotent, it must be idempotent because it may happen that the value 14 is written again and again and again, but that is all right. So, this is called a redo. Now, this redo is needed, but undo is not needed. So, this deferred database modification scheme is sometimes called a no undo, but redo operation. Okay. So, this is called a no undo, but redo recovery scheme. So, this is a term for the deferred database thing. So, no undo, because undoing is not needed, but redoing is needed. So, this is called a no undo or redo recovery scheme. And just to complete this, redos must be done in the order that they appear in the log. Otherwise, there may be wrong things and a very small example to do that is that suppose 
there is uh, another write by some other transaction T2, which writes x to 16. Now, it must, must happen that the final value is uh, noted because the x is a common. So, it must be done in this manner. So, 16 should be the final value that is being written. So, reduce must be done in the operation that they appear in the law. Before moving on to the next scheme, let us uh, see an example. So, here is a complete example of this thing. So, there is a start T0, okay, that is the first operation. Then, a write of T0 is writing a value to some data item A, which is 9. Then, there is a commit. So, then T0 commits. Then, T1 starts. We are assuming this is a serial. Then there is a write of T1 to the same A with the value 7 and then there is a commit. Suppose this was what was intended to follow. And now, suppose there is a crash after the write T0 statement. So, there is a crash at this point. Okay. Now, what happens is that the following thing. So, when the log is searched and there is no transaction that is found with a commit statement. So, nothing needs to be done because there is nothing committed. So, nothing is being written by any of these transactions to the database and so nothing needs to be changed. So, that is done. Okay, fine. The next thing is that suppose there is a crash after this write T1 statement. Then what needs to be done is that again the log is searched and here this commit T0 is being found. So, the operations of T0 need to be redone. So, T0 is redone. So, essentially this write T0 A to N, this, this operation is being redone, but nothing on T1 needs to be done because T1 has not committed. So, that means the value of A should not be 7 and it is not 7 because it has not committed. So, that A the same value, the new value 7 has not gone through A. So, that is fine and finally, it may happen that the crash takes after commit T1 is done. So, then again this entire thing is searched and both commit T0 and commit T1 is uh, found. So, both T0 and T1 are redone and very importantly in the order of T0 first and then T1 on the order of the log records. So, redo of T0 must be done in the first and then T1. So, that is the example for this deferred database scheme.